Hi, it's Paddy Hirsch at Marketplace. So what exactly are ratings agencies and why are they so powerful? Well, to explain, let me take you to some student housing. Here's our little house. It's about, I don't know, two and a half miles away from the campus. So the people who live there, you know, they're, uh, they have to take a bus or walk to school. It's kind of a pain for them. But one day, John moves in. Here's John. And uh, he's got a very nice new car. It's actually this really very sporty Volkswagen TDI uh, sport wagon. Very nice car. And everyone in the house wants to borrow the car. But John's a little nervous because he knows that students have got a bit of a, re of a reputation. Firstly, that's why insurance costs are so high. And secondly, you know, they're kind of a bit flexible with the whole issue of you know, maybe time or getting a car back clean and all the rest of it. So he doesn't really want to lend to these people that he, that he doesn't know. So he s explains to them, like, I'm sorry, I, I can't lend to the car to you because, you know, I don't know how to, I guess I don't know how risky you are in terms of borrowing my car. So the housemates get together and they think, how can we deal with this because we really want to borrow this car. So they ring up the guy who John has replaced in the house, this guy called Mr. Filch, or Filchy, here he is. And uh, Filchy lived with them for years, so he knows them all very well. And they say, hey, listen, Filch, we'll take you out to dinner by a big slap-up meal if you give John a call and tell him about us, like an independent, you know, kind of grading, if you like, so that he knows, you know, whether or not we're good risks in terms of borrowing his car. All right, says Filchy. So he goes out, has a few beers, has a nice time. Rings up John the next day, a little bit hungover, and he gives them the download on all the, all the housemates. And the first housemate is Grace. And Grace is uh, one of these people who is extremely well organized, lovely girl, immaculately turned out, and a you know, perfectly organized room. You know, always very, very clean, very tidy. Next, we've got Tom. Uh, Tom is uh, he's a bit of a lad, old Tom. You know, again, very well organized, very nice chap. But uh, last year, he had a bit of an accident because uh, he was texting when he was driving. And uh, you know he crashed his car, and his mum took it away. Uh, then there's Peg. Uh, Peg is uh, she's actually uh, a very wealthy young lady. She's a bit of a you know a bit of a trust fund kid. Lots and lots of money. Um, she's very again uh, she's a, a very nice person, but she does tend to be a bit scatterbrained. You know, this kind of person who leaves her keys everywhere. And then there's uh, so that's Peg. And then there's Jim. And Jim is uh, one of these guys, his, his dad was in the army, and so he's, uh, he's very well organized indeed, and he's very, very tidy, but he is a bit of a socialite. He likes to have a few beers, maybe a few too many beers sometimes. So John says to, uh, says to Filch, says, uh, hey, Filch, okay, well, uh, thanks for all the detail. If you were gonna actually grade these people, how would you grade them? First thing somebody goes, well, I'd certainly give Tom a D, you know, because, uh, you know, because of that little accident that he had. And he says, and I'd probably give, uh, give Grace an A, Okay, because she's so, I mean, she's meticulous. I mean, you've got no problems with her. And now Peg and Jim, they're pretty much about the same, but uh, I would say that uh, Jim is, you know, because he likes his beer a little bit, I'd maybe give him a, a C <coughs> and give Peg a B. So there we go. So this is great for John. I mean, it's easy. He, if he was going to find out all this information about these people, it would have taken him months. He'd have to spend ages, you know, working out who was tidy and who wasn't and who was dangerous in the car and all that we liked to drink and who didn't. But this way, he gets the information for free. He, he didn't even have to pay for it. It was the people in the house actually paid for it. And it allows him to then uh, understand how much he should charge each person based on the, their risk. I mean, Grace isn't a particularly risky person at all. She's going to get that car back. So maybe she'll pay two bucks over the cost of gas. Peg, maybe, I don't know, $5. Jim, maybe $10. Tom, <laughs> maybe 50 bucks, you know, because of that D that he's got. And then the next day, uh, you know, Terry and June pop up from next door, a couple of students from next door, and they're like, oh, John, we hear you're lending out your car. Can we get in on the action as well? Of course, John says, well, you know, I don't know you, but if, if you know Filchy, maybe you can, you know, give him a couple of beers, and uh, maybe he'll tell me, you know, how he would grade you. Sure enough, Filchy goes out for a couple of beers, rings up the next day and says, oh, yeah, Terry and June, very nice people. You know, they're probably a little bit more uh, organized than Peg. Um, but I would say not as great as, as, uh, as Grace. So, you know, if you were going to have uh, Terry and I would say June is probably a little less good than Terry in terms of reliability. So June, maybe you give her an A because she's better than Peg. Maybe Terry, he gets a double A. And uh, yes, that means Grace would get a triple A. So you can see now that, that, that John has got this excellent metric that he can plug anybody in to understand how risky they are and therefore how much he should charge them when he's going to lend them his car. And this is exactly what companies do or investment companies and banks do when they're lending money. They need to know who they're lending to, whether it be a country or a company or whatever. So what they do is they go to these rating agencies and the rating agencies have been paid by the countries and the companies that they're actually rating. So it's free for the banks and the investment companies, this investment is, is, is or this, this information is free for them. So you can see why ratings agencies are so powerful, all right? 
banks are busy people. The one thing they don't want to do is spend money on stuff that they don't have to spend money on. And if there's some guy you know, going out and getting ratings on organizations, you know, why would the bank want to spend loads of time doing that research? You can just go to the ratings agency. The second thing is that a lot of the funds that investment companies and banks create are actually, actually have in their language they're required to hold certain types of security, certain rated securities. That's actually written into, into uh, the, the covenants, as they call it, the rules for those funds. So it means that these, these investment companies, these banks, actually have to get ratings. So now you can see that there are kind of two reasons why ratings are so powerful. Of course, there is a big problem with ratings. Sometimes they get things wrong, and sometimes they can get them badly wrong. One of the things with ratings is they like to use models. So they say, well, because this happened in the past, you know, this will probably happen in the future. The problem with, with models is that they don't dig deep enough into the instruments that they're rating, the companies or the sovereigns or the, or the securities or whatever it is that they're rating. And we saw this during the financial crisis, where ratings agencies went out and they rated certain securities AAA, these mortgage-backed securities, whereas in fact, those securities had more profile of you know, Jim or Tom or C or a D. And what happened? Those securities essentially went out, you know, filled up on pills and booze, you know, texted and, and made phone calls while they were driving, had a massive car wreck that nearly crashed the economy and left all of us very badly needing a drink.